Welcome. I am so excited and honored to be here with Marcy Shimoff. We are going to be having a conversation today that will change your life. We are sharing tips and techniques that will transform you into a more joyous, loving person immediately on this call. So please stay tuned with us and let me introduce to you the amazing Marcy Shimoff. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Shannon. Hey, uh, Marcy is a number one New York Times bestselling author. She's a world-renowned transformational teacher and an expert on happiness, success, and unconditional love. Her newest book, Love for No Reason, Seven Steps to Creating a Life of Unconditional Love, debuted at number three on the New York Times bestseller list. In it, Marcy introduces a revolutionary program to live in a deep and lasting state of unconditional love and shows you how to access that at any time in any circumstance. And we can all use that, can't we? <laughs> Marcy's other books include the runaway bestseller, Happy for No Reason, Seven Steps to Being Happy from the Inside Out, and six titles in the phenomenally successful Chicken Soup for the Women's Soul series. Her books have sold more than 15 million copies worldwide in 33 languages and have topped all the major bestseller charts, and she's been on the New York Times bestseller list for a total of 118 weeks. Marcy is one of the best-selling female nonfiction authors of all time. She is also the host of the national PBS television special called Happy for No Reason and is a featured teacher in the international film and book sensation, The Secret. Marcy has inspired millions of people around the world and is dedicated to helping people live more empowered and joy-filled lives. And I am sure she will be inspiring you today. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. And Shannon, let me inter introduce you now, if I may, because I know you're going to share some wonderful tools and, and strategies with us today. So I'm delighted to be here with you. And Dr. Shannon South, who's also known as the Joy Doctor, is the source for people who are ready to experience more joy and empowerment in their lives. She's the author of Love Wisdom, A Soul's Journey to Wellness, with a forward by Dr. Norm Sheely, who's the founder of the American Holistic Medical Association. 20,000 readers voted her best therapist in Western North Carolina of 2012. So that's fantastic. Congratulations on that. As a transformational speaker, she has worked extensively with the North Carolina healthcare system, training employees and managers on critical caretaking and self-care skills to deliver joy to their patients. She has been published in various magazines such as Subtle Energies and Energy Medicine for her research on mind, body medicine, and healing. She's been interviewed on television and radio shows throughout the United States, and she led a three-part televised series called Love Wisdom. Her latest book, which I am thrilled about, The Joy Magnet, Five Keys to Transform Fear and Depression into Happiness and Love. This book offers life-changing keys for others to step into their most empowered, joyful, and loving selves. And Shannon lives in Asheville, North Carolina, growing with and enjoying her beautiful family and friends. Gee, I appreciate that. And I forgot to add to your introduction, you are a fantastic Zumba dancer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's begin by, um, I would like to ask you a question, and I would like to know, what are the qualities of someone who is happy for no reason, Marcy? Can you share that with the viewers? I would be happy for good reason to share that with you. So, you know, many people think that when I say the phrase happy for no reason, it means that you're walking around 24 seven with a silly grin on your face. You're in some Pollyanna state of denial. And that is not what I mean by happy for no reason. When you're happy for no reason, you have an inner state of peace and well being that you carry with you no matter what's going on. So it, it doesn't mean that you're not, you don't get sad or frustrated or angry or you don't grieve. You do. These are normal emotions. What it means is that you have an underground, ground, under, underlying ground of peace, of well-being, of all is well in life, even if I'm experiencing some sadness or some anger or some grief or some frustration. And what that does is it allows you to actually be more resilient and to bounce back better in challenging situations. So uh, a few characteristics of somebody who's living in a state of love for no reason is that they, they feel very um, in the flow of life. They have a lot of energy. 
They are able to deal with life's challenges. They feel very present. They're in the here and now. You notice that they're, they're really right there with you. They're not in some faraway place. And they're just able to really deal with life and be present in life with more gratitude, more flow, more ease. And what I like to say is that when you're happy for no reason, you don't look to your outer experiences to bring you happiness, but instead you bring your happiness to life. So, and I imagine that that's very similar to what you uh, talk about when you talk about being a joy ma- magnet. So, would you share with us what are some of the qualities of a joy magnet? I'm so excited to do that. Thank you for that because as I, as I was listening, I just kept thinking, wow, I can relate to some of those things and what I talk about in the joy magnet. And so, a joy magnet has similar characteristics. A joy magnet has become a state of joy within themselves and so their outer circumstances are more pure joy because of that they know they're who they are in terms of that joy and that love within and there are three qualities to know that you are around a joy magnet one is the joy magnets tend to be empowering they empower themselves and other people and my guess is that that is something that you do naturally marcy you do that on a daily basis and they empower people because they have a deep attunement to themselves and their needs as well as other people. So that really empowers other people to be around a person like that. They also have a clean and clear and open heart. So this helps to empower them as well because they don't have to get stuck in past mucks and stuff <laughs> because their heart is more clean and clear in the present moment, as you mentioned earlier. And secondly, they have the ability to inspire. And they inspire because they are so connected to this deep well of authenticity and creativity. And I know you know all about that, Marcy. And so inspiration comes naturally from them. And they also inspire because they're not afraid to take risks. And that is a huge quality that Mm. I think inspires most people. And then thirdly, they not only empower and inspire, but they also know how to rejuvenate. And so rejuvenating is such an important piece. They rejuvenate because they have healthy relationships, and there's a harmonious balance of giving and receiving. And they also rejuvenate because they have healthy practices of rejuvenating practices. You talk about in your book of just ways that they know how to stay juicy because we're all going to have challenges in our life. And when we hit these challenges, how do we get back to kind of a set point, as you talk about, Marcy, a happiness set point? And so to be able to get back to the center point and rejuvenate and stay juicy and alive, even in the midst of challenges, is something that you'll know you're around a joy magnet if that's the case. So, again, the three things for a joy magnet are they can empower, they inspire, and then they know how to rejuvenate. Well, Shannon, you're a great model of all three of those. So I love that you're walking your talk on it. Oh, thanks, Marcy. I appreciate that. And so I, what I would love to share with the viewers is are some tips and techniques. And I know you have some of your favorite tools that you use to rejuvenate. Would you be willing to share one of those today with us, Marcy? I, I absolutely would. And, you know, what I love is, is that we, we both have this, uh, you know, share the philosophy that where the rubber meets the road is in the practices. It's in doing And I know that people are so busy these days that we don't have time to do long, long practices, many of us, although I I believe that, that, you know, spending a good amount of time in practice is a wonderful thing. But I'm, I'm really interested in sharing some techniques that people can do in a short period of time, a few minutes during your day. So one of my favorites is a technique called the inner ease technique. And I learned this from an organization called the Institute of Heart Math. They're the world's leading researchers on the heart and how it affects our happiness and our well-being. And they have shown that this one technique that I'm going to show you can move you in just a very short period of time from what science calls the stress response, where we all know what that feels like. You know, we're stuck in traffic or we're, you know, in a meeting with people who are frustrating or, you know, things aren't going our way. We're in the stress response. We can move very quickly into the love response which has an entirely different uh, brain activity, entirely different heart rhythms and biochemistry. And so I'm going to do this, and I'm inviting everyone to join along. It's going to take just a couple of minutes. And I'm going to ask Shannon, I'm going to ask you to be my guinea pig, because at the end of this, I want you to share how you feel different than you did, you know, right now when we're starting. So in a couple of minutes, did you feel any shifts? And I ask everybody else to, to notice that for yourself as well. So this technique can be done with your eyes opened or closed. 
Uh, if you're in a place where you're able to close your eyes, I invite you to do that because it goes a little deeper. But even if you can't close your eyes, you can still do this. So if you're able to close your eyes, please do so. And I'm closing mine. The first step is to simply place the palm of your hand over your heart. Now, this very simple act of putting your hand over your heart starts the flow of a chemical called oxytocin. And oxytocin is dubbed the love hormone because it's what we have much more of when we feel bonded and connected with each other. So mothers who are breastfeeding have lots of oxytocin. We have oxytocin when we're making love. Just putting your hand on your heart like this stimulates the flow of oxytocin. Now the second step is to imagine that you're breathing in and out through the center of your heart. So you can either picture that or feel that, whichever sense works best for you. But just imagine that your breath is coming into your heart and it's going out of your heart. You're inhaling and exhaling through the center of your heart. So picture or feel that. And you may already notice that uh, perhaps your breathing is getting deeper or you're starting to feel some shifts. Now, the third step is that on each inhale, imagine that you're breathing in love, that you're breathing in ease, that you're breathing in compassion. And your exhales can just be normal exhales. So at your own pace, imagine breathing into your heart ease, love, and compassion. And exhaling normally, but each inhale, breathing into your heart ease, love, compassion, and exhaling out of your heart. And you can, you can either remember a time when you felt love, ease, and compassion, or you can just even say the words and it produces the same result. So just imagine breathing into the center of your heart, love, ease, compassion. And take one more deep inhale, breathing those into your heart. And on the exhale, you can open up your eyes if they were closed. And you can take your hand down. And take a moment to just notice, how do you feel any different than you did a couple of minutes ago? That, that was about two minutes, what we just did. And so notice if you felt any shifts in your body, if you felt any emo emotional shifts. And Shannon, since I told you you'd be our guinea pig, tell me, how do you feel any different now than you did just a couple of minutes ago? Well, I feel extreme expansion in mm. my heart and a sense of being settled back down into myself in a really calm way. Mm, beautiful. And, you know, a lot of people report what you've just said. Um, some people say they feel more grounded. Uh, they feel... Some people have physical sensations like warmth in their heart center or even tingling in their hands and feet. So all of these are indicators that you are moving into the stress response. And what I love about this is that it's so simple to do that you can do it anywhere. And, you know, doing it once is a nice experience but won't create real shifts for you. And what I suggest that you do is that you do this two or three times a day, every day for a couple of weeks. And if you do, you will start to make a habit of going into the love response. And I do this while I'm standing in line at the grocery store or while I'm sitting on the phone. Nobody has to know that you're even doing it. So, so I, I just recommend use your own life as an experiment and try it out for yourself. And, uh, you know, Shannon, I know that you also have uh, some really fabulous techniques for greater expansion, for joy, for empowerment. So will you share with us one of your favorite techniques for increasing joy and empowerment? Oh, I would love to. And how wonderful to just continue that, to feel the results of that experience. So thank you so much, Marcy. Um, yes, I would love to share a technique that I do with my clients. And it's called the Love Wisdom Meditation. And when I give clients this meditation, I often don't see them again because it's so transformative. And so I begin wondering, why is this so transformative? And so I've studied this uh, meditation. And what I found is after three weeks, if, like you said, to expand the time, so if people do it for three weeks, 15 minutes a day, 
that they had a significant increase in dopamine, you know, the feel-good, yummy chemicals in their brain. They had a decrease in anxiety and a decrease in depression. So I was so excited to find this out, and so I won I, I, it gave me a lot of understanding that the physiological shifts that people were having when they do these rejuvenating practices. So I'd really like to share it with you today. So yeah. did, will you be my guinea pig as well, Marcy? I will be happy to be your guinea pig. Fantastic. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, give you the setup steps for the meditation. And first, we are going to envision a fire above your head. This will be the fire of divine love. This is the transformational fire. And that's step one. And then step two, we are going to ask for assistance. So what I say is I ask for assistance from a higher power. And Marcy and viewers, you can ask for assistance from whatever fits for you spiritually. So it may be a spiritual teacher, it may be angels, or what, what works for you. And then third step is we are going to affirm who we really are, and that is I am love, I am loving, and I am loved. And similar to your inner ease technique, we affirm that love within us. And so those are the setup steps. Now, the second part will be experiencing the meditation. So if you, Marcy, will just kind of sit up straight in your chair and just allow yourself to close your eyes, or you're welcome to look at me, actually, either way. And what I'd like you to do is repeat after me, and I'm going to say to you, um, and just repeat this back. I ask for assistance. I ask for assistance in releasing and transforming any and all non-loving thought forms and energy. Any and all non-loving thought forms and energy into the fire of divine love. And so breathing in from your feet to your stomach, I'd like you to say out loud, I am love. Inhale. I am love. And exhale. Very good. And breathing in from your tummy to your heart, saying, I am loving. I am loving. Great. And then breathing in from your heart to your head, saying, I am loved. I am loved. Great. And you can say it to yourself if you'd like. So I'm going to repeat that again. We're going from your feet to your stomach, and we're breathing in, I am love. And exhale. And we're breathing in from your stomach to your heart, I am loving. And exhale. And breathing in from your heart to your head, I am loved. And exhale. And last time, breathing in from your feet to your stomach, I am love. Exhale. And breathing in from your stomach to your heart, I am loving. And exhale. And breathing in from your heart to your head, I am loved. Just now being with how your body feels and being with the shift that may have occurred. You may feel more centered or relaxed. And when you feel ready, you're welcome to open your eyes and come back to the room. Mm, wow. I love that. I am love, loving and loved. It was beautiful. You know, I feel this amazing energy, just like I feel like I'm a column of light and love moving from the bottom of my feet all the way through the top of my head. I really feel very um, balanced, centered, and uh, great. Love that. Hey, I'm so glad. Thank you so much for being willing to try that with me today. I just really enjoy that. So these are some just incredible transformational tools that people can use to increase their joy immediately in their life. And like you mentioned earlier, practicing these over time is so valuable to kind of make these a habit when you kind of get off balance or feel crunchy or whatever is going on in your life just to really reset and rejuvenate. So I know there are more tips and tools that you use personally and professionally. Would you be willing to share a few more with us before we close today? Yeah, why don't I share one more and maybe you share a little bit as well. 
So, you know, I, I, let me, I want to share a technique with you that really relates to um, the meditation, the beautiful meditation you just gave us, because what I have found to be the probably the most important key to feeling greater happiness in life is self-love. And it's something that we do not have. You know, we, we are brilliant at being self-critical. But most people have not developed the ability for self-love. And honestly, you know, we have an epidemic of depression and anxiety in our society. And I think that a lot of that relates back to, if you look at the correlations, people who have uh, who are very critical of themselves and not as much self-love, they, they're going to be more challenged. So first, if I can share a story with you of someone that I interviewed for Happy for No Reason, because it's a powerful uh, example. It's about a woman named Sally Sals. And Sally shared with me that the week before her 50th birthday, she was she became quite suddenly very, very ill. And she was rushed to the emergency room of her local hospital. And when the doctors examined her, they told her that her liver was failing. And it was so severe that she was going to need a liver transplant in the next few days or she would die. Now, this came as a complete shock to Sally because she had no history of liver disease. Nobody in her family did. She didn't drink. She had no idea what, what caused this. Um, over the next few days, she got weaker and weaker. But very fortunately, on the third day, they found her an appropriate liver and did the transplant surgery. And all was well with her. She recovered beautifully and all was well for a year until she went back into the doctor for one of her routine exams. And the doctor told her that her second liver was failing and she would need another liver transplant in probably the next few months. Well, again, Sally was shocked. She had no idea what was causing this. But on that doctor's visit, she happened to be sitting in the waiting room next to a woman who had just had her third liver transplant in three years. And, it, and the woman was the most angry, critical, negative person that Sally had ever met. And it reminded Sally that in Chinese medicine, every organ is associated with an emotion, and the liver is associated with anger. So Sally thought to herself, okay, where am I angry in my life? And she realized that most of her anger wasn't directed outward, but she had a lot of anger towards herself. She had grown up in a very critical and judgmental family, and she was always beating herself up. She never felt like she was good enough, and, and she had a lot of self-criticism and, and, she, and anger towards herself. So in that moment of realization, she made a commitment to herself, and her commitment was to practice self-love every day, you know, just no matter what, for 10 minutes a day. And that's what she did. Two months later, she went back to the doctor for the exam to get ready for her next transplant surgery. And the doctor sat down and looked at her and said, Sally, I have no idea what's just happened. I have never seen this before, but your liver is completely healed. We don't need the transplant surgery, and this is a medical miracle. Now, Shannon, that was 18 years ago. Sally has never needed that liver transplant. She is one of the most happy, vibrant, vital people I have ever met. She met her, her soulmate, beloved, six months later. And she is a beautiful example of being truly happy and happy from the depths of, uh, you know, for no reason. And, you know, I think that I, I, I share that because this self-love is so important. So um, one of the things that I'm going to suggest that everybody do for more self-love is ask yourself a simple question three times a day. And here's the question. What's the most loving thing I could do for myself right now? Simple question. What's the most loving thing I could do for myself right now? Now, see, most of us are in the habit of being able to take care of everybody else, and we take care of ourselves last. And what we need to do is we need to be self-loving. Self and care is part of self-loving. So, for example, your answer might be, right now I could go get a glass of water. Right now I could go outside and get some fresh air. Right now I could take just a moment or two and do the beautiful love meditation that Shannon just taught us. So it's going to be different answers in different moments. But if you do this just twice a day, you will shift your experience of care and love for yourself. Mm. I love it, Marcy. That is so fantastic. And talk about a powerful 
small yet potent thing that people can do that are busy. Like I work a lot with moms, and they can really yeah. just pull this into their life in a way that just really supports and holds them in a new way. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. And I'd love to know, Shannon, what are some of the other practices that you use professionally and personally or that you're going to be sharing in your book, The Joy Magnet? Because uh, I know you've got fabulous practices in there. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, I do several things, and I'll just give you a brief little blip. But um, one of the things I love to do is meditation, of course. I've been meditating 18 years, and it has been transformative to my life. And the, the second thing I use with clients a lot is a joy magnet quiz, and I have that on my website. And what it does is it helps them learn how they're cultivating joy. And so they can just take the quiz and kind of see where in my life do I need that potent shift like you were just talking about? Where do I need to kind of turn things to support and give myself a deeper sense of holding and love? And then the third thing is I do a lot of mindfulness work with folks, just staying in our present moment, as you mentioned at the beginning. And how do we stay here? Because we know a lot of the stresses from the past or the future. And so if we can just be fully in our present moment, we tend to feel more empowered and joyful. So those are three things that I use often with my clients and personally as well. So... Great, Shannon. You know, I I love the work you do. I it is so powerful, and you know, I've I've seen a lot of various work in our field of of happiness and joy, and I'm so inspired, touched, and so have so much great respect for your work. And I really encourage everybody to uh, to do the practices that you talk about and to to get the joy magnet. Oh, you are wonderful. I'm just so touched to be with you, Marcy, and our viewers. I know are loving this, so I wanted to end by just challenging the viewers, as you've already done somewhat, to just pick one of these tools or both. And just you, or all three of them, actually, you gave them several great tools, and use them because it's so transformative. And also just, you know, wishing for all the viewers that they can feel this love and joy from within and know that that's who they are more and more each day. And you may also have some, I know you have some amazing, incredible closing words for us as well, Marcy. So thank you again. Yes, and we want to make sure to let people know how to reach both of us as well. So if if you want more information on Happy for No Reason, you can just go to www.happyfornoreason.com. That's happyfornoreason.com. And for you, Shannon? Yes, you can reach me, uh, any of my work at www.drshannonsouth.com. And so I'm looking forward to... Uh, you know, creating this relationship as well with each of you. And so, yes, um, please do reach us if you're interested in these tools and techniques and even more juicy things to keep you inc- increase the joy in your life. And Marcy, would you like to share some closing words for us? I would. You know, I'm often, people will often say, isn't this selfish? what we're talking about, you know, why should we be focusing on taking care of ourselves when, when there's the whole world to take care of? And my answer to that is that it's the least selfish thing that we can do. Because when we take care of ourselves, we take care of the people around us and the world by raising our own happiness and joy. It spreads. And so I'd like to close with a Chinese proverb that sums up why Shannon and I are really both here doing the work that we're doing. And it goes like this. It says, when there is light in the soul, there will be beauty in the person. When there is beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the house. When there is harmony in the house, there will be order in the nation. And when there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. And my prayer, and I know Shannon's prayer for all of you, each of you, is that we all feel that love and joy and happiness in our own hearts and souls. And through that, we help create a planet of peace. Thank you so much, Marcy. You've been a joy and a fabulous, precious honor to be with you. Wonderful to be with you, and thank everybody for joining us. Yes, take care. Bye-bye. Bye.